Which is greater, faith or knowledge? And your faith is dormant this because you know. Where in the world did the Book of Mormon actually occur? It has to be a land of liberty and freedom. It is choice above all other lands. It has to be in the United States because there's nothing like the U.S. of A. any place on earth. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Atheist Apostate. I'm your host AA and we are here with another rebuttal video. This time this rebuttal video is going to be going out to, and let me pull this on up here for you guys and switch on over. This is going out to Bruce Lloyd. Bruce Lloyd, right here. This is in rebuttal to Joseph Smith and Josiah Stowell in Old South Bainbridge and Colesville, New York. Why am I rebuttaling this? Why am I coming after Bruce Lloyd? And yes, Bruce Lloyd, I am coming after you. Why am I coming after you? I am becoming after you because I am familiar with the homeland, not theory, the homeland hypothesis. It's not a theory. It has not been proven. It is not you guys think of theory in a non-scientific term. I am a science-based person and the term theory is not what you guys think. It's not like Sherlock Holmes and, oh, I have a theory. No, that is a hypothesis. It just sounds better to say, hey, I have a theory than, hey, I have a hypothesis. Long word, hypothesis, theory, short word, not the same meaning. A hypothesis is a guess and speculation that you need to test. A theory is the test that you have done and have been reproduced over and over without any deviation. So that is what a theory is, not the test, the results. So this is the homeland or heartland, sorry, the heartland hypothesis. So I knew some of it. I didn't know a lot of it. I knew enough that it was rubbish. I was doing this video, I was putting together a kick-ass presentation for you guys, and as I hit into some of their lectures, I decided I was stopping. In the descriptions, down in the descriptions, I will give you the lecture uh, links. Oh yes, I will give you the lecture links if you want to suffer through these. Because they are ridiculous, they have nothing to do with what they're claiming. One of them is proving the Heartland Hypothesis using the Book of Mormon and 37 scriptures to prove it. And they tell you right off the bat, it's all going to be based on the laws of Moses. And none of it is any evidence towards a Heartland Book of Mormon, uh, you know, uh, taking place. None of it. It has nothing to do with that. So I really don't want to waste too much time, but it is relevant enough that we do need to uh, focus on some of it. So I'm not going to lie. We do need to focus on it. We need to dismiss this. Before I start this, I want to just make it uh, clear. I am not against members of the church. Some of my good friends and my best friend are members of the church. I love them deeply. I'm about transparency and letting you guys make up your own decision based off of the LDS Apologetic Branch Fair and their releases on behalf of the church itself and the non-members. This is a special video because the Heartland uh, Hypothesis is even rejected by the church leaders by the church leaders. There speaks on their behalf, guys. Even some of the church uh, leaders have come out and saying, we do not know where the Book of Mormon uh, takes place. Even to this day, they still say, I'm not getting into whether the Book of Mormon's right. I'm not getting into whether the Book of Mormon's wrong this episode. I'm not getting into uh, how it's right and how it's wrong. What I'm here for this video, this video here, what we're here for is the heartland hypothesis and dismissing it. So even members of the church do not accept this. The heartland hypothesis, before we get into this very quickly, the heartland hypothesis is that the Book of Mormon taught by Joseph Smith, so Joseph Smith, not later church leaders, by Joseph Smith, was founded and taken place here in the Americas. So not South America, not Central America, and not even North America. So, but America, because North America is Canada and Mexico as well. Canada and Mexico are part of North America. According to the Heartland theory, or hypothesis, so 
parts of Lower Canada, just on the borders of Quebec and Ontario, just above the New York uh, or the um, uh, U.S. border, is parts of the place they uh, believe it takes place along the Great Lakes, just just above uh, around the Great Lakes of Canada part. Nowhere else. So the, nothing else there is part of the uh, thing. So we're ignoring all the bands of Native Americans, all the um, indigenous people of Canada, of Canada that were, you know, for thousands of years, thousands and thousands and thousands, over 10,000 years, guys, we are ignoring bands in British Columbia, Alberta, Manitoba, northern, uh, mid and northern Ontario, mid and northern Quebec, the Maritimes and Newfoundland are excluded in this. And we know that there were Abir or indigenous people in and around Canada all through it for over 10,000 years. The Book of Mormon's earliest characters, earliest people, and we'll argue this on the sake of this is a uh, factual book and not fiction, the earliest inhabitants of the uh, Book of Mormon come just after the Tower of Babel, which is around 350 before Christian era, BC, before Christian era. So we're talking 9,000, nine and a half thousand years. We had all of North America and Latin America settled by the indigenous already before, before God tells the Book of Mormon people twice on two different occasions, two different groups that they are inheriting a land never inherited before. Important never inherited before. And this is in the Book of Mormon. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. If you're a member, you know that's in there. If you're an ex-member, you know that's in there. If you're investigating and you've talked to the missionaries already, they should have told you this by now. Yes, they should have. If they didn't, they should be telling you soon. If they not, then I need to find out what the first discussions are all about now. So, because this is something that you're going to be taught. First the Jaredites, then Nephi's uh, family with Lehi being the patriarch. That's just Mormon history from the very inception and in the Book of Mormon itself. In the Book of Mormon itself, remember that. Okay, so point number one before we get into our video clips. So we had, ab or I hate the word Aboriginal, it's been ingrained with me. So the indigenous people here, I am part Native American. Two of my great grandmothers are full blood Native American. So I am Micmac on one, uh, two sides of my family, which are from the Algonquin uh, uh, bands. I am part Native myself. I used to take pride in that as a member that I had Lamanite in me. Lamanite. So, my ancestors have been on this continent for 10,000 plus years, not 350 BC, which is just over 2,000 years now. So that's not the true history. We know this in history books now. Getting on before I drone. If that is the case, my Heartland uh, Hypothesis uh, listeners, if you're watching this, you guys cannot ignore that. Second, before I get into this video, do you think the people of the Book of Mormon uh, people were factual historical people? Do you think they do not know the difference between a lake, a lake and an ocean? They crossed an ocean to get here if it's factual. Do you not think they don't know the difference between a lake, because the Great Lakes for you who don't know, we'll be getting into this, and, and an ocean? We start thinking logically and rationally and this breaks down before we even get into a clip. Wow. Okay, let's get into this, guys. I'm sorry. Let's get into this. 1906. President Teddy Roosevelt created the nation's first national monument designation. Okay, this is important, guys. I, I, I added this here because the lands that they're going to be claiming, the Heartland Hypothesis, the Heartland Conspiracy, uh, it is a conspiracy. It is. So, the Heartland Conspiracy is recorded the locations they are claiming and i'm not going to start off with uh one of the mounds they're talking about in their pro video i'm going to start off with a historic video by from uh, the u.s uh, historic society featuring all the mounds that these guys are claiming are part of the nephite labanite society 
So this Teddy Roosevelt was the first president to make a histor or historical landmark. So this is these sites are historical landmarks. So we know about them. They've been uh, they're being uh, excavated and studied as we speak. They're still being researched. The purpose of this designation was to preserve for all Americans significant pieces of the country's history, ecology, geology, and beauty. Okay. Okay. So they're telling us why Teddy Roosevelt started this. We are trying to preserve these sites. We're trying to learn about them and preserve them for future generations. So it's not like we don't know about these sites, a uh, hard uh, land uh, conspiracy uh, hypothesis. It's not like we don't know about this. Uh, outside of the Book of Mormon, we know tons and you know, we do know tons. Not as much as we would like to know, nearly not enough as much as we like to know, but we know enough. Was Zarahemla located in the heartland of America? This is fair. Fair, the apologetic branch of the U.S. Uh, or LDS Church. Book of Mormon geography is a topic that is of little importance and has no bearing on our salvation. Whoa, 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 whoa. Has the geography of the Book of Mormon has little bearing to importance and no salvational uh, importance? I'm going to disagree with you guys. This isn't supposed to be an anti-LDS video, but I'm going to disagree with there. This is what the whole purpose of this uh, Heartland uh, uh, hypothesis is, is it's important. It matters. So if Joseph Smith was right and correctly translated these places, found them and translated them, then it matters where this took place. It does. And this is why there's a source of contention in the church where the uh, Hill Camorra is and where the Book of Mormon place or events take place. And this is why to this day, 200 years uh, almost later, so and yes, we're reaching on to 200 years almost, in another uh, few years, it's been 200 years, it's been 100 years since Joseph Smith had his first 200 years this year since Joseph Smith had his first vision, 1821. So 1824, he's going to be uh, uh, visited by an angel, supposedly, for this event, for these plates, right here. That little box you see on the other screen. So yes, it's important. Yes, it has impact on our spiritual soul if you're LDS. So this is why the Heartlanders are crazy over this. Yes, it matters. Yes, it has an importance if you're LDS on your soul. That's rubbish. But recently, it has become a subject of debate as a group that believes the Book of Mormon took place in the heartland of America has begun to call into question one's faithfulness to the gospel if you do not agree with their opinion on the location of Book of Mormon events. Okay, so they will disagree with you. I'm going to come back here really quick. Just to my point number two, let's go back here. These are the lands being contested right here. We're going to focus really big right here on Zarahemla really quick. So if you notice on the map from the uh, Heartlanders, the Lamanite lands cover up to the Rocky Mountains. Up to the Rocky Mountains. So all the Native Americans that were there for thousands of years before the Book of Mormon uh, people came over, the Jaredites, we're not even gain focus on Lehi because the first are the Jaredites. We are ignoring, and let's go back here, we are ignoring everyone along the california mexico region everyone all along the rockies we are ignoring british columbia right here alberta Man saskatchewan manitoba ontario quebec and the maritimes of canada and newfoundland all those aboriginals uh i hate that word all the native american uh, tribes so that were here for thousands of years before are being excluded to make this work my second point, look at, we can just see ocean here and ocean here. Look at the difference of the great sizes of the Great Lakes that they claim the ocean to the east, the ocean to the west. So we're going to be going more on that. They are tiny compared to an ocean. So if they cross the ocean from the Middle East, Jerusalem, so, and there's two possible paths. They either came from the west over the Atlantic or they came from the uh, east. So uh, they went uh, east across, uh, which would take them over into the Pacific Ocean and landing. They, the church does not say which path they took, but it's one or the other. So they know the difference on how big an ocean is. 
They know the size of an ocean. They know the size of a lake. If you walk around the lake, you see it is a lake. You think they are freaking stupid. So no, they are not stupid. They are far from stupid, my friend. So let's see what the Historical Society of America has to say. Archaeologists are only now realizing the true engineering wonder that is Poverty Point National Monument. It's the oldest city on the North American continent. It is the oldest city on the North American continent. According to the Heartland Hypothesis, the Nephi or Lehi's family came and landed in Florida. Florida is the location of the landing zone for Lehi and his family, according to them. This location, they tell us, is the oldest location, and we're going to find out where it is. It's not Florida. This is Springtime the comes to the lower Mississippi River Valley. The lower Mississippi River Valley. The Mississippi Delta. Close to Florida, but not Florida. The Mississippi Delta Flatlands. Because of this, we have felt it is necessary to review the theory to confirm whether their claims are accurate or not. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you because I have extensive research, years and years and years, of pro-LDS scholars and archaeologists, of regular secular, which means non-LDS scholars and archaeologists. I've got extensive research into DNA and genetics. I've got extensive research in the migrations coming out of Africa and which, uh, uh, which waves. So <clears throat> I'm familiar with all of this. I'm familiar with the Clovis first model. I'm uh, familiar with the uh, early first model, which predates uh, the uh, entry into North America via the Bering Ice Bridge almost, what, 10,000 years before the Clovis first model. I'm uh, familiar with the Seleucian uh, model, which uh, hypothesizes that so uh, early indigenous Americans, uh, Native Americans, came over from Europe around the uh, Spain area across El uh, the Atlantic Ocean via a, um, ice blocks. So I'm familiar with all this. I've done over 10 years of research on this. So I'm familiar. I don't want to break. I'm only saying this so you guys understand I know too. Not only does their know and done extensive research, so have I. So, and their theory breaks down. Right now, we have three issues of contention that they are unable to resolve and they're going to try to resolve. First one is the oceans. The second one is um, uh, with uh, the landing location. So, just doesn't happen. The third one we're about to find out is this is the oldest location and where does it date to? We're about to find this out. We have found that this is not the case and that those who support this theory pick and choose the evidence they want to use while ignoring the evidence which contradicts this theory. Well, the church is pretty bad for that herself. Uh, so, just to point that out, the church is calling the kettle black here. At this place in present-day Louisiana, once stood the oldest city in North America. Present-day Louisiana. Did you get that? Present-day Louisiana. We're not talking present-day Florida. This site is now called Poverty Point National Monument. Within the monument are the remains of the only city the world has ever seen built by hunter-gatherer culture. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Built by a hunter-gatherer culture? Well, we know hunter-gatherer cultures here, so don't, didn't build large cities with sophisticated, uh, you know, modern, uh, and I'm talking modern for the Lamanites, technology, because they had modern, they had big cities. You, you know, they had uh, working water uh, systems. That's technology. So they didn't have little cistern wells where they pulled in and hauled in their water. They had functional cities that were on par with what you would call Rome or Constantinople or Egypt. You know, they were a modernized city. They weren't hunting and gathering. They were agricultural uh, societies. They had uh, uh, grain systems for farming. They had animal husbandries, which means they were uh, cows, sheep. And they tell us this in the Book of Mormon. Hunter-gatherers did not have that. So they did not do that. Hunter-gatherers moved from a hunter-and-gathering society approximately 10,000 BC 
slowly over, and this is in the Middle East in Europe, not over here. We continued uh, being hunter-gatherers uh, till the Europeans. Slowly, we, unless you're talking Pablo, moved over from a hunter-gatherer and stopped hunting and gathering our food on a daily basis to living with a agricultural society where we grew our own food and we raised our own livestock. And this is important. So because the evidence in the Book of Mormon says they had sheep, they had cows, they, you know, they had grains, they farmed their own grains. Hunter and gatherers didn't do that. And we're going to, they had large cities. The population of Nephites and Lamanites were in the millions. So important. What we like to talk about is parallels. We f look for things. Oh, sorry, this, this here, before we get in, this here is one of the leading speakers for the Heartland Hypothesis. So the link is down in the description. This is a Heartland Hypothesis uh, lecture, seminar. In the Book of Mormon. Let's go back here and start. Look for things in the Book of Mormon that match the archeological evidence that we can find. That we can find. Evidence we can find. Throughout the Midwest. Uh, it is my personal belief my first this first group of people that we're going to talk about really are our Nephites that match the Book of Ta uh, Mormon timeline. So, so, he says it's his personal belief based off evidence, not academic belief. There's no academic belief here. This is a personal belief, guys. This video will explain the fallacies of their argument that Zarahemla was located across the river from Nauvoo. This claim comes from the Firm Foundation's interpretation of D&C 125 verse 3, which says, Let them build up a city unto my name upon the land opposite the city of Nauvoo. Yeah, read that. And let the name of Zarahemla be named upon it. That's what we're... Okay. Why am I mentioning Zarahemla here? Why am I putting a little bit of focus on this and pulling off of that city? Because Zarahemla is going to be one of their leading arguments. It's going Zarahemla is one of the largest, one of the largest cities in the Book of Mormon, and it's one of the most important in Mormon early history. One of the most important. So we we're going to be heavily focusing uh, part way through here after this on Zarahemla, and we're going to jumping back to some more topics here of why this is not so for the Book of Mormon possibly being up there going to unroll tonight as we oh, go through these uh, various images. But again, oh, I can't stand here? here and tell you it is them. I just can tell you that I believe that it is them. Whoa. And I leave the What 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 he what was this? He said he let's listen to that again. I just can tell you that I can't stand here and tell you it is them. I just can tell you that I believe that it is them. Whoa. I he he's saying I can't tell you it is them, only that I believe it's them. The Heartlanders are attacking people in the church for their test, uh, their testimonies for believing that the Book of Mormon took place in Mesoamerica. They are attacking members' testimonies over it. So over, you believe it, you, you, you can't prove it, but you believe it and you're attacking people's testimonies. So Bruce Lloyd, you're attacking me and telling me I'm uneducated and don't know anything. And here's one of your leading speakers telling you himself that he can't prove it, he only believes it. Holy shit balls. And I leave the rest up to you. So I'm just gonna show you what is out there and we can have some fun with that. Yeah, we will show you what's out there too. Tonian got around to. This is Hopewell. This is uh, Pleasant Point's, uh, one of uh, Pleasant Point sisters under uh, the historical uh, monuments uh, site that uh, was created by Teddy Roosevelt. So this is one that we're going to deal with a few sites. So we're looking at uh, Hopewell. So right now we've already saw uh, uh, Pleasant Point. So here's two of the mounds that they're claiming is evidence. Identifying this particular timeline when I joined the church. So they want to go on the amount that is falling in line with the Book of Mormon time period. I'm showing you another mount that is much, much, much earlier by several thousand years. Point, or Pleasant Point is several thousand years older dating. And this one's older too, don't get me wrong. This is older too. This one that they're trying to you know, uh, focus on, the uh, Heartlanders. But where the problem is, is 
they are only going to focus at the end of that time frame period when that culture started dying, which is around the same time that they claim the Book, well, the Book of Mormon says they started dying too. They're not going to focus on when this culture started thousands of years before. Because if they do, that no longer goes into the 350 before Christian era, so just over 2,500, almost 2,500 years ago. 2,500 years ago to 10,000 years ago. Big 7,500 year gap. Church, 1970. I was taught that Lehi landed somewhere down there on the tip of South America, and I know you all have seen the same thing. I was also taught that the events of the Book of Mormon took place right there, in South America and in Central America. Correct. That's what I was taught as well. No debating that. He's not lying to you. If you're raised in the church, if you're an ex-Mormon, you know that. If you're an investigator, he's not lying. And then I was also taught that somewhere in that Central America area, somewhere up here, there were at least four and possibly six potential hill Camorras. See, I was taught a two hill Camorra uh, hypothesis. Two hill Camorras, one in somewhere in Central uh, America, so Mexico, which is part of North America or Central America, and I was taught that there was a hill Camorra in Upper State New York. Two. I didn't even hear about four till later when I brushed across, across these guys and dismissed them years back. According to the Book of Mormon, Lehi and his family traveled across the ocean and landed in the New World. After some time, Nephi and all those who would go with him fled into the wilderness and established the city Nephi. So this is right in the Book of Mormon, so they're not going, you know, the Heartlanders can't dispute this. This is right in the Book of Mormon. So look where the proposed areas are. First inheritance off of the sea like they should off of the sea there's no land on the other side of this picture here there's no land like in the great lakes they landed the land of inheritance first inheritance and established the first city nephi later the nephites traveled northward and found the city of zarahemla which was see they found it northwards the city of zarahemla so second city, that's why I said it's a very important city. It was already occupied by the Mulekites, where the Lamanites took possession of the land of Nephi and the rest of the land southward. So this city is your people that were here. The Jaredites and Malachites, I talked about the Jaredites and there were people here before. In the Book of Mormon, I'm not here to disprove it, we're told Lehi was given this land of uh, inheritance as the first people ever. There's no people before here. Then we're told in the Book of Mormon, actually that's not correct, there were two people here before the Jaredites and the uh, Malachites. So, and they came here during the confounding of the Tower of Babel, which was approximately 350 before the Christian era, or for you Christians, CE, Christian era. So, 350 years. So that is 500, uh, 300 years before uh, Lehi's family, and almost 2,500 years ago to our current date for the last battle because you see if you have all this going on Hill Cumorah has to be somewhere down here where the battle was held the final battle and then of course what happens when the battle is over poor Moroni what does he have to do he's got to carry that 60 pound weight we're told all the way up to a second Cumorah which happens to be in present-day Palmyra New York all right, guys, this is their argument here for why they believe in a heartland uh, hypothesis. So they're claiming that they don't believe that somewhere is where the church currently teaches. The geography is right over here. This is where they're teaching currently that they traveled all the way up. I don't know why they have this big arch, you know, no clue why there's this big arch. So they have this big arch. I know why there's a clue. I know why. I don't know why they think so. The, I know why, because this is where they say Zarahemla is right up about here. This is where they claim Zarahemla is. Oh, oops, sorry, double-clicked it. They believe Lehi, even the city of Lehi, is right where my mouse is right about here. So Zarahemla would be here, and if they traveled upstate New York, where Camorra is now, see that arrow? That is where they are. So he's claiming that they traveled all the way up there. It was impossible. That is... That is the foundation he's making right now. Within the monument 
are the remains of the only city the world has ever seen built by a hunter-gatherer culture. Okay, I'm repeating that. This is a replay of uh, Point or Pleasant Point. The first known man, one of the ones they claim is evidence of the civilization of the Book of Mormon up here. On the terraces were the homes of this once magnificent city. Homes that might have looked like this. How many? I think uh, once you try to evenly do some spatial patterning out there, you're probably looking at five to six hundred homes that would very easily fall in here. Five to six hundred homes. Five to six hundred homes. So that's a far at the peak of its time. At its peak, five to six hundred, he says. So that is a far, far, far cry from a population claimed in the Book of Mormon. Far. And this is the biggest of these mound uh, builders. With a population maybe a uh, thousand to two thousand at its uh, at its highest point one to two thousand people at its highest point one to two thousand people the book of mormon is stating that there is huge cultures there's more people in the armies so okay I'll, I'm gay. sorry my cat wanting up there's more people in the armies of the Nephites and the Lamanites per army than there is just in the whole culture of these people at one point. Do you get that? It cannot be the same people. Cannot, cannot. It's not the same people. So they are trying to make history fit. They are trying to make their own hypothesis work and this would not be a theory. This would break down because it cannot be reproduced. So it breaks down, and this is why the church even comes out and does several articles and videos on this. The Heartland model interprets this information in this way. With I'm like, the I'm... Lehites landing near Florida, the land of Nephi being in the Tennessee, Mississippi area, Zarahemla being across from Nauvoo, and the Sea East being Lake Ontario. Okay, I'm stopping right here really quick. Right there, they say Florida. So, Florida, Tennessee. The first, first, and oldest of these mounds are from Louisiana. Louisiana on the Mississippi Delta. So, we are going, they are claiming here, land of first inheritance. We are all the way over on the Mississippi Delta over here. So, they are completely off the mark. This isn't something I'm making up, guys, you know, trying to bring these guys down. Bruce, I'm not trying to call you guys fools or idiots or anything. I'm just trying to point out how foolish and idiotic the idea is. It doesn't match up. I'm not focusing too much more on here. We're going to be jumping to Zarahemla because that is their main focus. I'm trying to point out where they're wrong. They want to claim that the Sea East is up here. Let's go back. Let's listen. The Sea East should be right here, not Sea East up in the Great Lakes. That's not a sea, that's a lake. And the Sea East being Lake Ontario, and the Sea West being a combination of both Lake Michigan and Lake Huron, and the narrow neck of land being between the Great Lakes. Okay, that's another explanation for the Book of Mormon explaining its geography. So, okay, so Sea West right here, Sea East. It can't be a sea because there's land all here. It can't be a sea self, it's land all here. So it cannot be the sea west, there's all land around here. It can't be the sea north, there's all land around here. So land, it breaks down. So sea, land, land, land sea west, land sea north, land sea, or sea south, land sea. So if they landed in Florida, there's the sea, there's the ocean. So they know the difference, they should know the difference between a sea and an ocean. They move up into the Delta area, so they establish the land of Nephi and their first uh, uh, city. They move up into the Midwest, the Heartland, that's why they call it the Heartland Theory, because it's the Heartland of the states in the middle, establish or take over the land of Zarahemla, and then they say this is all, and then they move over into the Great Lakes region, and then start claiming the whole story, the origin is right here. Woo! This is why I don't want to focus too much more time on this. 
I want to disprove the Zarahemla uh, hypothesis, and then I'm, I'm done. I'm done. No more. I shouldn't have even given it this much attention. This was ridiculous, a waste of my time, a waste of your guys' time, but had to be addressed. Bruce Lloyd, stop, think, use rational, logical thinking. Come on, seriously. How can you land in, C uh, in Florida? So, and if we're going to take the Book of Mormon, you know, uh, as true, and we're going to listen to your heartland theory, and we're going to use your own logic, your own logic and your group, heartland uh, proponents. Okay, you land in Florida. You move up into establish the land of Lehi. So you go into the land of the Zarahemla where it's already the Malachites owning that uh, territory and region. So you guys end up moving into the land of Bountiful. Here's the land of Bountiful. How? How? Rationally and logically. How do you explain the CE West here, C North, C South, and C East? How? They land. They come from the Sea West or the Sea East. They land. They're more likely coming from the Sea West. That's what we're being told. And that's why they have in the Book of Mormon believing that it's in Mesoamerica and it's somewhere down, the land of Lehi is somewhere down on the west side of uh, or South America. So that is why. So you have them coming from the sea. How? How? Do you come from the sea and then there's all this land up here? How is that all this land up here? Then you claim this is the sea region that they came from originally. This is how you locate. Because if this was the narrow neck of land leading up into the Americas, this would be uh, Mexico and Central America. According to the uh, Mesoamerican uh, uh, hypothesis, this is the uh, narrow stretch of land. So if you go to, uh, you know, what's it called? A uh, map. So you would have a sea here, which is the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean. You would have a sea here, which is the Atlantic Ocean. And then up here, you would have North America, Mexico and North America. Down here, you would have Central America, the narrow strip of land. And down here, you would have Cent or South America, the sea east and the sea west. So that's why proponents believe. That's why proponents believe who are LDS, that the Book of Mormon takes place in Mesoamerica, from Mexico south, and migrated north into what we call North America of Canada and parts of the U.S. That is why. So this just does not work in any friggin' which way. No more focusing on this. No more. This alone breaks it down. We're, I was going to focus on the animals and the ecology and the grains and all that, We'll leave that for the Book of Mormon uh, part uh, when we get it into the Book of Mormon and Lamanite versus DNA. We're not even going to waste our time with these guys. It is foolish. It is rubbish. It is horseshit. So we are going to prove the Zarahemla part next is foolish, rubbish, rubbish, and horseshit as well. So wow, you guys. Wow, wow, wow. I agree with you, Jesus. These guys are a special kind of special. Now, before we jump in, talking about Book of Mormon geography, it's important to know that God's chosen prophets and apostles have recently put out an official essay about Book of Mormon geography. And it's very important that all of us take the time to carefully read and review this. Okay, let's listen to what they have to say here really quickly before we move on to Zarahemla and what's leading up to Zarahemla. And Tyler and I love that the brethren have taken the time to speak on such an important matter. We found 36 very specific prophecies and promises in the text of the Book of Mormon. Prophecies and promises about the land and the people or the Gentiles who will be led to this promised land in the latter day. All right. So the church tells us it's not important. It's not pertinent to our salvation, but the God, they give us some instruction. These guys here are going against the current teachings of the current leaders of the church. Rod, who we see up here, or Rob, sorry, who we just saw here saying there's 36 scriptures to prove that the Book of Mormon took place in the heartland. Remember that. He says there's 36 scriptures to prove the heartland uh, hypothesis. So the church says it doesn't matter. I think it does. So they think it does, obviously, because this is why they're arguing it. 
because this video has as much to do with the Book of Mormon geography as it does with a specific edition of the Book of Mormon. Yes, it does. This is a copy of the Book of Mormon that this group currently uses, and we're going to hear a little bit more about it in a second. This is the annotated edition of the Book of Mormon, where the first printing was started in about 2018. This is produced as a third-party edition by a group called the Firm Foundation. Whoa. So this is not a official Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Book of Mormon. This isn't a officially endorsed copy or version of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Book of Mormon. This is a third-party edition. Third party. This is produced by FIRM, the FIRM Foundation, Foundation for Indigenous Research and Mormonism. So, and Mormonism, a word the church doesn't even like, and they put it right in there, the FIRM. So, the FIRM Foundation, Foundation for e Indigenous Research and Mormonism. Third party account, not official by the church. And the main influence for this is from a man by the name of Rod Meldrum. Rod. We met Rod at the beginning with the uh, Heartland uh, Theory video. We just heard Rod claim that there's 36 scriptures to uh, support their uh, belief in their case. That is the man who has this created by a third party. In the mid-2000s, there was some critical editorials as opposed to the Mayan Indians or people of Central America. Yes, we're not going to focus a lot on here. We're going to quickly go by here. This is just leading up to why the Heartland Foundation believes Zarahemla is the land. So, and this is important, but they are disputing 100%. Uh, this isn't them. This is a uh, LDS scholar we're listening to right now. But the Heartlanders are refuting based off of uh, stuff. This new theory has become what's called the Heartland Model to describe the Book of Mormon geography to the Hopewell or Adena cultures of the American Midwest. These groups have an extensive exposure across the land to include mound building, trade routes, communication, and tribal integration. If I yes, they are very big on using the mound uh, builders. Very big. A lot. The majority of their evidence and their hypothesis is built off of that. Like we looked at at the first step uh, earlier in the video, I didn't go through all the mounds because the more and more I start looking at their evidence of why they claim, the more I thought it was just ludicrous and idiotic. And yes, it is ludicrous and idiotic. Because, because if Zarahemla is one of the mount cities, and that's what they're claiming, is Zarahem, if Zarahemla, you know, Book of Mormon uh, town mentioned, is where they say it is on the one of these mound cultures then according to first nephi according to first or second nephi sorry they built temples the temples were built out of stone they were adorned with gold they had a lot of what you see in current temples that are supposed to be structured after that it built a temple and it had constructed after the manner of the Temple of Solomon. That dimension is bigger than the Pyramid of Giza, Chichen Itza, and the Pyramid of the Sun. This was a monumental earthwork that most people don't even Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so as you saw that picture, so as you saw that picture, I'm going to switch back here. Do you see anything on there that could be uh, reminiscent of a temple? Do you see any stones that are somewhat poking out? Do you see any uh, irregular formations that might indicate that there was something like a temple there? No. No. So, and later we're going to hear some of their excuses. Why? If you fly over South America and use uh, ground pen penetrating uh, radar technology, scanning technology, when they are flying over the dense jungles, they are able to locate former uh, Mayan Inca in that, uh, you know, uh, locations. And part of what they see in that is irregular shapes. And there is nothing at all here to indicate that. Even realize that it's right here in North America. You have to determine which type of evidence is stronger or more robust evidence than other types of evidence. In the book. So. 
they say basically what Rod is saying. Rod is the gentleman who's had this uh, revised Book of Mormon created. So and we'll learn a little bit more about it soon. So Rod is telling us that if we have two pieces of evidence, two uh, sides of evidence, we look at the evidence that fits what we're looking to build, not the evidence that contradicts what we want. His evidence is not evidence. His evidence is not stonework, it's not pottery, it is not artifacts that would be found in a temple, it is not, you know, uh, her, uh, hearth pits dug up, it's arrowheads for the most part. Older weapons that are dug up common day every day. Book of Mormon, the entire Book of Mormon lands are located between the Sea East and the Sea West. And this is important because this is how we're going to know where Zarahemla is. Because if you see right over here, there's our Zarahemla. From the land Nephi, which is the southernmost point of Book of Mormon lands, right to the here. land northward, the northernmost part of Book of Mormon lands, we have the East and West Sea bordering on the left and right. And I'm not going to stop here and focus. We're going to focus. I'm not going to focus. They're going to focus. I'm going to have a quick commentary. This is important. This is important because if we take it from here, following the Book of Mormon geography, and we place it where they say it is, everything breaks down. I'm not joking, and we'll get into why it breaks down pretty soon, and why Zarahemla cannot be in the Heartland if it really existed. This means that according to the Heartland model, the entire Book of Mormon had to have taken place between Lake Ontario and Lake Michigan and Huron. The Smith. Yes. So, uh, here. We're going to hear what Joseph Smith, about Joseph Smith from them in a second. Did you see, though, where they placed it? It's in between a stretch of land between the Great Lakes in North America. The Great Lakes. We'll focus on this in a second again. Smith, claiming to have received revelation, wrote it down and put his name to it. In so he put his, uh, they said, this revelation, and this is going to be important. I put this in here because near the end of the video, this is going to be important. And I don't want to say why it's going to be important right this minute, but it totally breaks down their hypothesis. I can't even call it a theory or a model. It breaks down their hypothesis completely. Before these guys get into explaining more here, I'm going to give the definite nail in the coffin. As you guys saw, there's a sea east, and here it is here for them. Here's a sea west if we have to go where we can place this in the Midlands, so Heartland. So, if we place it here, if we place it here, guys, and I'm going to st stress this, if we place it here, we have big problems. So, why do we have big problems? One, according to this model they propose, Lehi and his family landed somewhere in Florida and then went northwards. So if they were in Florida, Florida's way, way down somewhere here. So this is the narrow stretch of land that they have to work with. We end up with part of the Great Lake underneath here. There's no sea, you know, uh, self, and then land underneath the sea self in there. They came in, and if you look at Florida, the sea self it looks like, you know, the sea self. They would come in, there's a big gap that you can't see. So if the land Lehi, or Nephi, if the land Nephi that's in the land self, puts it down around here somewhere. That would have to put it down here because there's no waterway. No waterway mentioned in between the strip of land. Only sea east, sea west. There's water here. So this has to put it right here. So the land of desolation in the Book of Mormon, the land of desolation is north of the uh, narrow land between the sea nor or east west. This would go into Canada. This would be the land of desolation. So, right in here would be Zarahemla somewhere. If we're going by Book of Mormon geography. This can't happen. This can't happen because according to them, Zarahemla is down over here across Nauvoo. It's down here across from Nauvoo. So, the sea west is thrown off. It, it gets a little lost out. The land of desolation in their model. The land of desolation in their model. 
goes from the north, where it says in the Book of Mormon, over here to the Indi or the uh, unknown territories. The territories back in Joseph Smith's days, past Nauvoo in those areas, it was not states, it was territories. Utah, Nevada, New Mexico, all those areas, Colorado, were territories, not states. That's why it was the Wild West. Oklahoma, territory. Oklahoma at that time would have been uh, known as the Indian lands. So what's later become reservations. So uh, learn about the uh, Trail of Tears, that'll make all sense. This is important because they are leaving this information out in their model. This land all over here was inhabited by Native Americans inhabited for thousands of years before the Book of Mormon time frame takes place. The Book of Mormon first people, and we will hear about this, their first people, the Jaredites slash Amalekites, so came over just after the confounding of the Tower of Babel story. So approximately 2300 years ago. So from today. In the start of the Christian era, that would have been 200, about uh, uh, 2300 uh, years, or uh, two and a, three, two to 300 years before the birth of Christ. So, no, 2500 years. So, because it was 2300 BC, yes, sorry. So, 2300 years before the birth of Christ. 500 years before the birth of Christ, Lehi's family comes over here. So we are ignoring all the history before the Book of Mormon times take here that we have concrete, 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 hammered home, concrete evidence for. Breaks down. We have to move the land of desolation from the north to the Indian territories. Breaks down. We have water blocking the land of Lehi from the bottom. The north and the west sea don't match up. Zarahemla can't be where you say it is because Zarahemla has to be somewhere in this area between the Sea West and the Sea East. Okay, let's go. Let's... Sea East and Sea West, making it impossible for the city of Zarahemla to be in Iowa. As a matter of fact, once we place the Book of Mormon in its correct place between the East and West Sea, the heartland theory begins to disintegrate. No, it doesn't begin to disintegrate. It does disintegrate. It, it, it falls apart right away. That's why the LDS Church cannot even entertain the thought of that because it would be laughed at because it's implausible. This is a review of some of the evidence that indicates a North American setting for the Book of Mormon. In whoa, whoa. And Rod has zero, zero evidence for the Book of Mormon uh, taking place down in here where most of the locations, not exactly where they point it, but most of the uh, geography would support it. Instead of having a land northward and a land southward, divided by a narrow neck of land as... Yeah, so, see, the narrow neck of land they talk about. We're not disputing that, neither are the Heartlanders, but what the problem I brought up... Look right in that circle above the narrow leg. Desolation. So they bring the land of desolation over into the Midwest U.S., not above the narrow neck of land, like it says in the Book of Mormon. Described in the Book of Mormon, the only area available between the Great Lakes is what the Heartlanders consider to be the narrow neck of land. This eliminates the land northward and the land southward. Not only does it eliminate the uh, land northward and southward, it also uh, eliminates the territories uh, because that's where they end up saying the Lamanites were, but there can't be any territories there. There can't be any land there because it's supposed to be the Sea West. See what we're getting at. Even the church sees this. See what we're getting at. What is also problematic are the claims made by the Heartlanders who put so much emphasis on the Book of Mormon taking place in the Land of Promise and that it only exists within the boundaries of what is now the United States. What did Joseph Smith know about the geography of the Book of Mormon? Joseph Smith went up on this mound with the Twelve Brethren. He discovered that the person whose skeleton was before us was a white Lamanite. His name was Zelf. He was a warrior and chief. Behold, I said... Whoa, whoa. White Lamanite, okay. Now you wonder, you know, you LDS members, the Lamanites were fair-skinned, the, uh, or the Nephites were fair-skinned, the Lamanites were dark-skinned. 
Zelf is a prophet. If you look over on the other side of the map here, we'll go here. Here's the Hill Kimura, upstate New York. Here's Zelf. This is, uh, you know, uh, as they're migrating through the Missouri area. Uh, notice this would be roughly where Kirkland is. And we get into Nauvoo uh, just right over here. But this is the mountains. Right here is the territories. Notice what I said about the territories go off the... Uh, go off the uh, range they have they have to take the territories out they can't use the territories unless they claim it's the land of desolation and of the uh, Lamanites he was a warrior and chief behold I say unto you that you shall go unto the Lamanites and preach my gospel all right guys I'm going to touch on DNA in a second, but let's hear what Har or, uh, Bear says. However, once the Book of Mormon is placed between the Heartland Theory East and West Seas, this moves most of the Book of Mormon events into what is now Canada, not the United States. Yes, the land of desolation becomes Lower Ontario, Canada. So Windsor in those areas, Hamilton, you know, uh, Chatham, all those areas in Lower Ontario become the land of desolation first missionaries who were sent unto the Lamanites went to tribes which today harbor haplogroup X DNA how did okay why we know and it's going to come up in a second here we know that the Native Americans of South Central and um, uh, North America, all three uh, groups of indigenous people came over in two different waves. Two different waves we know of. The first wave we call the Clovis First Model. They came around 10,000 to 12,000 years ago during the ice bridge, during the last ice age over the Bering Ice Bridge. They came down into the Americas and went into South America and populated. DNA has shown 100% there is zero mil Eastern DNA out of the Clovis First model people. Zero. They all came from Siberia and the Mongolian Plateau steppe region. Scientifically proven with DNA and the church struggles with this and we'll focus on more on my uh, DNA versus the Lamanites uh, video coming up in a few days. Not this one. So we also have another model called the uh, early first century, uh, or, uh, first ent early first century model, which pushes another group to about twenty-five to twenty thousand uh, years ago. So we've got the artifacts, we got the evidence, we've got cave art. So thousands and thousands and thousands of years before the Book of Mormon ever took place thousands of years before Mesoamerica or Mesoamerica Meso, Mesotamia was ever ever known of so Mesopotamia was our first Middle Eastern culture our first civilizations our first husband husbandry so that's farming so animal farming we that's these people came over before those people in the Middle East even settled and created the first of the cities when they were still hunter-gatherers themselves so the DNA says otherwise. The DNA does not claim they are of Middle Eastern descent. There is, however, and we're not going to focus on this. This will be in another video. So you, I'll have the links on the bottom. Penn State uh, has done extensive research and released papers on this amongst others. But the Cherokee Native Americans do have some Middle Eastern. Only one bank. And not only do they have Middle Eastern, they have several other cultures mixed. Most Native Americans have other DNA culturals mixed now, unless we go back to the old uh, stock. The Cherokee has some Middle Eastern. If you know anything about genetics, if you know anything about DNA, and you know the migration out of Africa, so, and if you're Christians, this might be hard for you, and you might not accept this, but science is science. When we had some of our waves coming out, one of the waves, uh, first wave, stopped in the Middle East for a few thousand years before they kept on along the coast into India, when it's now India, and split up into Asia or went down into the Polynesian areas and we had the aboriginals of Australia and some of the Polynesian islands. Those who went up into Asia and Eurasia are the ancestors of the Asians, the Mongolians, the Siberians. So the ancestors. 
So some of them over a course of time intermixed uh, so much that only a small percentage of people still remained with the Middle Eastern DNA. No other tribe is able to in the States. It's been pretty much bred out except for one, one mole band and they're not even sure that's how it came in. They're unsure, but they know it did not come directly from the Middle East. Markers identify other markers in there for cultures as well. So it disproves that. How did Joseph Smith know is the next question. He didn't know. And that's one of the reasons he didn't know. Joseph Smith know that. It in the mid-2000s, there was some critical editorials regarding DNA testing in comparison to Native American peoples. Yeah, so as you can see there, these are all the different bands, all the different cultures. They studied all the cultures in Latin America and Central. We're seeing from Mexico, which is part of North America actually, all the way down Guatemala, Honduras, all those uh, Central American countries. So Nicaragua, Nicaragua all the way down into Latin America. They've done extensive research on the North, Central, and uh, for DNA sampling. As can, a criticism to the Book of Mormon being in a Central American location. And, and this is why if you were members of the church like I was growing up and you're older, or if your current members around my age are just a bit younger and older, this is something that you know. Open up your Book of Mormon. Open up your Book of Mormon. If you have a brand new current Book of Mormon, even better. If you have an older Book of Mormon, so even uh, just as good. Yeah, introduction. So just as good. And then go to the LDS website and pull up the introduction uh, to the scriptures for the Book of Mormon. Because it's the new version. And the DNA and this calendar from the other side, and I'm not getting too much into this, but this is a change and this change still disproves the heartland. This is important. The Lamanites. So all were destroyed except for the Lamanites and they are the principal ancestors of the Native Americans. I'm not sure if you can see that. If you got the older copy, pull it out. They are the principal ancestors of the Native Americans. Now go to LDS.org Go to scriptures, go to Book of Mormon, go to the introduction page and see that same or, uh, paragraph at the uh, end of the beginning uh, paragraph, the last sentence, and it no longer says the principal ancestors, it's now they are a remnant of the Native Americans. A remnant, not the principal ancestors. It changes the context, it changes the meaning completely because a remnant allows them to be a lot more other uh, diverse, uh, uh, di diversified uh, cultures there that DNA can explain. Now they can say, well, yeah, but they're only a remnant. They're not all of them. They're only a remnant. Before it was, they were all of them. And you older members, you know that. I just shocked a friend. I, I, I totally shocked her. So, because she did not know about the change and she grew up with the same teaching as me that all the Native Americans, South Latin Americans are the Lamanites. The remnant or the uh, ancestors of the Lamanites, not a small, uh, only a small uh, tribe of uh, Native Americans are. So this is why it matters. This is why I'm going on here. Yes, this deals with Zarahemla, because if you look on here, Zarahemla is always somewhere in the center of this area, because this is the only area that matches the Book of Mormon, if it's in the Americas. We do have a claim of the Book of Mormon actually taking place by members over in Asia. So, and I won't get into that. Maybe I'll do another video. If you guys want me to do another video on the Asian uh, um, model, it, it's just as valid as this one. If you want to say it's valid, it's just as valid. Tell me in the descriptions. But let's get going. If this geography is correct, Book of Mormon history is literally on the same sacred grounds as church history. Okay. If, if, they're always saying if. Rod says if. His uh, companion, Mr. May, who we saw the lecture from always says if and they believe if and they believe they do not know they attack members as if they know they they go crazy bash it crazy over people over this as if they know excuse me so this isn't something this is ifs these are ifs and these ifs are based on location yes Camorra was in upstate new york this is one of the biggest problems the two Camorra hill uh, Camorra uh, hypothesis uh, problem so this is where joseph supposedly found the plates 
So right here in Kimora, guys, right here in Kimora, upstate New York. Then they come into Ohio. They are chased out. So they have to leave. They go to Pennsylvania, then Ohio, then Missouri. So Missouri area. So according to these guys, it's in the upper Mississippi River Plateau area. So they say it, they landed. They say that the Book of Mormon Lehi and them landed down in this area, this stretch. So this is where one of the, the oldest mound is. This is the oldest mound. And like I said, at best, the Historical Society for the United States Monument said at best during its peak, it was 2,000 people strong. 2,000. The Book of Mormon tells us Zarahemla was hundreds of thousands. It was a large, great city. So this is just following Joseph Smith along his trail. So when we stop right about here, because when we get here, this is the mounds in the Indian Territory. There's Nevada, Calif or California's other side. But you got New Mexico, Nevada, Colorado, Utah, you know, uh, all those areas going up along here. In what used to be the territories where there was no states yet. When Brigham Young, after Joseph Smith and Hiram uh, were killed, Brigham took the saints into the territories. They did not stay in the United States. They fled into the territories. And this is why the heartland has the land of desolation and uh, the Lamanite land over there instead of up here where it should be above the narrow stretch of land which goes into Ontario, Canada. So this is why it's a joke and I don't want to get too much more into here. We're going to cover Zarahemla itself, their you know, uh, explanation for it really quick here, but that's about it. We're done with it after this. Rod read through some of the data and found that there were outliers within certain groups in the Ohio River Valley and the American Midwest that better fit the Book of Mormon model. Better fit the Book of Mormon model. Better fit. The long story short, Rod Meldrum proposed a new model of the Book of Mormon geography to be in the American Midwest. The location of Book of Mormon events is not important and has nothing to do with our salvation or level of faith. I disagree with that. As a former member of the church, when I was a member, it was very important to my faith. I actually, that's what got me interested in South America and Latin America and Mesoamerica in the first place was the Book of Mormon and books being put out and hypothesis being put out on where the Book of Mormon events actually took place. So when I was growing up, there was a two hill Camorra hypothesis. There's actually more than that, but the two main ones was in somewhere in Mexico or and the upstate and it was two, they taught two. It mattered because if the place the Book of Mormon uh, takes place in doesn't exist and it never happened where it says that it happened, then it can't be true. Because places they went in faith of the Lord, places they were sent, the journeys, Hillman's army, where they had to travel long distances, and they did it in the faith and being faithful to the Lord matters. These stories matter. What happens and where they happen mattered because it was calling in their faithfulness and their dedication to the Lord. It matters, and this is why the Heartland uh, uh, model matters to them, because it does matter. Now we know why Zarahemla cannot be where they said. So now let's hear why they say it is exactly. Let's give their evidence of not where the events took place, but why they believe the city itself, the most important city in the Book of Mormon, takes place in the heartland. And then we're done. Hopefully in 10, 15 minutes we're done. The Heartland Research Group consisting of more than 20 professionals, have gathered together outside of Montrose, Iowa. They are searching for the place where Alma's army crossed the River Sidon. Okay, Montrose is near Nauvoo. So Joseph is claimed to have said that Zarahemla would uh, be found across from Nauvoo. They believe the River Sidon, S-I-D-O-N, is located in the Book of Mormon uh, geography is located uh, crossing uh, by Zarahemla. So if they want to find Zarahemla, they have to locate the River Sidon. So I just want you guys, you know, who are investigating or unaware or not too up on that uh, church history here, if you're members, I want to give you some uh, up. During the harvest of 87 BC, Battle of Zarahemla is the most complete account with respect to space and time as any other event found in the Book of Mormon. 
All right, guys. This is their build-up. This is their build-up to their evidence. So remember this. Their build-up to their evidence to prove their case. This is their logic and rationale. Oops. 7 BC. Battle of Zarahemla is the most complete account with respect to space and time as any other event found in the Book of Mormon. For some, it has been assumed that the events in the Book of Mormon have taken place in a vast area, even though the Lord has not revealed the exact location of Book of Mormon lands. When okay, I put that in there because these men, that was fair. Fair speaks on behalf of the LDS Church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Fair's bosses are the Quorum of the First Apostles and the first of, or the uh, Presidency of the Church. The Prophet, Seer, and Revelator, which is the President for them, so I don't believe he is, but they do. So his first and second counselor. So he, they work under the direction of 15 men. That is their bosses. And they just came out and said, the church has no official stance where this place is. May, publisher of ancient American... Um, it has been a... Okay, and quickly, the guy we're about to hear, remember, this is the guy from the, the uh, talk that we had. So we saw earlier, this is the guy who says, I believe, I don't know, but I believe. Assume that the events in the Book of Mormon have taken place in a vast area, even though the Lord has not revealed the exact location of Book of Mormon lands. Wayne May, publisher of Ancient American Magazine, explains why they believe Zarahemla is located on the other side of the river from Nauvoo. However, through a... So before we get why, let's hear what the church has to say why he's going, the, uh, why he's wrong. I want to give their reason first. Careful reading of the text, we can begin to understand that the Book of Mormon events took place in a generally small geographical area, and that its people were just one of the many civilizations inhabiting the Americas. Okay, remember, they say it took a place in a small geolog uh, geographical area, and they were only one of many. I'm not here to disprove the Book of Mormon wrong, but I do need to touch on this really quick. So, because this is going to be a contradiction in a second, they're going to contradict themselves, the church itself. So, and confirm what I said and what you members of the church who are my age or a bit younger or older know. So, they're about to contradict themselves. Did you hear what they said? You guys, this isn't what you were taught. That they were one amongst many. We were taught that in 2300 uh, before Christian era, give or take a, a few years, so of the Tower of Babel, it's placed between 22 and 2300 uh, BC. So they place it, I'll see a little clip, it's just going to reinforce it, uh, a uh, Christian uh, scholar. It's going to give you the date in a, a few minutes. But they place it at the Tower of Babel. So for the Jaredites and the Malachites. Lehi comes here again, I'm hammering this home, in 500 BC. That's three peoples, each of them in the Book of Mormon. You go read it. You members who are current members, you know, so you can't disagree with me. You investigators are never members or, you know, who are interested in this video. This, I'm not saying anything that a current member my age, a bit younger or older, don't know. So the lands that they received were supposed to be uninhabited and never inhabited by another person. They were going to get a fresh land. That was a contradiction in the Book of Mormon because Lehi was told that when we first hear the story. So we are told that, uh, Lehi is told they will receive a land never inherited before. When they get over here, they end up encountering the Jaredites and the Malachites. Well, that's two people on a land that was never inhabited before, so there's a contradiction. And the explanation from them being here is they left the Tower of Babel and to be righteous too and came over here to a land never inhabited it before. The same promise as Lehi. But we know from the Clovis and the, uh, the uh, early first century model, and if we go with the solution hypothesis, which is they came over across ice uh, uh, blocks, so frozen ice blocks from Europe over into uh, the Americas versus the west, or the east over the west, we have three competing uh, uh, theories against what the Book of Mormon says. We know that people have been here at least 25 to, you know, 1,000 years ago. Not 2,500 uh, years ago. 25,000, 2,500 at best for the Book of Mormon people. So, and the Book of Mormon is trying to say that they were one amongst many when the Book of Mormon says that it was a land given to them uninhabited prior. Come on, guys. Think, think. Think. 2010, I was able to uh, locate a, a potential site for the city of for the. 
a potential site, not the site. They make their claims off a potential site stating their claims are factual. I should say the temple of Zarahemla. And of course, if that's the case, there would be a city there also. Yeah, if there was a uh, city there, if there would be a temple, of course. Remember again that their whole premise is, at the beginning of the video, is the biggest premise is for their evidence is the mount building people, the mount building culture. That's their biggest evidence. They are about to go into ground penetrating uh, aerial, uh, ground uh, penetrating uh, uh, radar uh, readings in a second. So it's going to jump, but it's all going to come back and make sense. They are, yeah, if there was a town, a city there, city, and the Zarahemla is supposed to be a large, large city. Not, not 2,000 at its peak, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands. So there was a temple there. Where's the bricks? Where's the artifacts from the temple? None of it there. But it was directly across from the Nauvoo temple on the West Bank. Yes, it was directly across from the Nauvoo temple on the West Bank. Nabu is the last place Joseph Smith made it across the West before he was killed. So we start with their narrative. This gentleman here's narrative down here right from my hand. Their belief is the Hill Camorra, which is true in New York, is the start of the Book of Mormon, and that is the start of the Mormon faith. So it comes from the Hill Camorra because that's where the place were found. He believes that it moves across the West. As they move across the West, so is Joseph Smith. Each location falls in areas that Joseph Smith personally was stopping and building communities. They stop at Nauvoo, so across uh, where the Kirkland Temple was, in Kirkland, uh, the Kirkland Temple, and they have their Zarahemla. They're following Joseph Smith's trail. So that's their evidence so far. Uh, of the Mississippi River, which uh, is exactly what it's supposed to be, if if the Mississippi River is indeed Riverside. Another if. Why if, Sky? Why if it's the Riverside? So the big problem there is the the Mississippi River goes down into Louisiana, the Mississippi Lower uh, Delta into Louisiana, and not near the Florida coast where they uh, claim that Lehigh first came. Anthony W. Ivins, first counselor in the first presidency. Okay, this is important. The General Conference of 1929 said, we must be careful in the conclusions that we reach. The Book of Mormon teaches the history of three distinct peoples. Whoa, whoa. Didn't Bear just tell us? And Bear is the LGS apologetic branch. They are the voice for the church when it comes to this stuff. They are the hired, you know, paid guns for the church. Said that the Lehi's family was just one of many different cultures that were already here. Already here. In 1929, that's only uh, 92 years ago, not even 100 years ago, one of the apostles of the church in 1929 says three. That's why I say three too. That's why I was raised with. That's what you guys who are just a bit younger than me, my age and older, who are uh, members, that's what you were raised with. That's your belief. So I know because I talk to members still. I still follow the church's belief. You guys, for the most part, are unaware of the change. So you, for the most part, are unaware of the change. Three people that came to the Americas. The Malachites, they're going to say really two, because the Malachites and the Jaredites count as one, really, if you uh, look at how they uh, explain it in the Book of Mormon. Or two peoples and three different colonies of people who came from the Old World to this continent. It has to be on the west bank of a major river. And it well, yes, it has to be on the west bank of a major river because it says in the Book of Mormon that it was on the west of the Sidon River. So do you guys get that? The west of the Sidon. They're using the Mississippi Delta. The Mississippi Delta does not go into Florida. So uh, it, uh, that mound, that uh, Pleasant Point Mound is in Louisiana. If you look down and find it and look along the map, it's not near the geography of Florida. Came from the Old World to this continent. It has to be on the west bank of the major river and it uh, fulfills that uh, part of the scripture. So in, in so doing, uh, once that was located, I, I hired a fellow by the name of Charlie Christensen. So he hired a fella. So once he located the area that he thinks is Zarahemla, he hired someone, and this is important, and we're going to jump here a little bit uh, uh, between uh, the aerial, and that's why I mentioned about the uh, overhead flying uh, radar. Came out. 
with his electronic gear and it's called resistivity and we resistivity that is when you see documentaries and they're flying over the jungles and they're doing uh, uh, ground uh, penetrating radar. So that's what that is and when they see stuff. And when they are over jungle area, they can see formations minus mounds of irregularities in their abnormalities, such as structures. So building structures, which we do not have. We do not have that here. Shot the location. Several LDS leaders took a, quite an interest in uh, a book that was published in about the 1840s. Okay, this book we're about to hear, this book is what the proponents of Heartland uh, model use as their defense that the church historians and scholars hijack the church's history. This is their defense. So no if answer, but so they say it, Bruce Lloyd, this was your argument. This was your argument. So this is the book that they're talking about. And this is the smoking gun against the, the, their own theory. Their own model. By John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood. They had made travels in the Mesoamerican area and had written about their experiences. And Frederick Catherwood was an artist and he drew uh, some of the things that they had seen. Yes. Guys. I want you, I'm going to go back there in a second, I want you to take a look at this structure. Take a look. I'm not going to argue about no mount. That, that's irrelevant to me. That there's no mount is irrelevant. But there is a stone artifact outside of here. There's stone mounts going all the way up. This is a stone structure. So, and even if it was a mound structure on top of it, it's a stone structure. Do you guys see that? It is important. Why? Why is this important? Because if you go to Angkor Wat over in, uh, the, uh, over in Asia, it is built by stone. If we continue going uh, west and we stop in Egypt, all the pyramids have been made with stone. So stone, some type of stone. So if we keep on going over to the Mayan and the Inca and those cultures, stone, stone. We have artifacts from every single type of those sites that are being claimed to be the same. Zarahemla is explained as if no different than the Egyptian uh, builders and those of Angkor Wat. And if you even want to go uh, even further uh, to uh, Tepe uh, Peki, um, so back into the Stone Age, back 10, uh, 12,000 years ago, they used stone, we have remnants of them. And in, or, uh, in uh, uh, Beke Ketepe, so they actually built on a mound, like these guys claim, and we have the stone artifacts. We have them. Why don't we have that here? Why? Why? Because it's false. And why do we know it's false? Let's find out from Joseph Smith in a moment. And when that was published, uh, people in general took quite an interest in this, of, of this, these ruins. They, including the president of the church, Joseph Smith, saw these ruins as evidence for Book of Mormon cities. And in doing so, we found uh, a, tremendous, uh, a tremendous rectangular structure sitting there. See? That doesn't look like a really good rectangular structure. They don't really take any side aerial shots, so you, so you can't see. All the documentaries I've watched on uh, Mesoamerica, you know, with the Inca going into the jungles of uh, Peru, going into the jungles of Guatemala, trying to go into the jungles of um, um, Honduras. Honduras, uh, right now, there's a bunch of on, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? unexcavated, unexplored uh, locations. Those locations, <clears throat> every one of those documentaries I've watched on those, when they do the aerial view, they always come out on the side so you can see some of the uh, formations they're talking about. These guys do not do it because if they do, the mounds are not there. Anything sticking up out of the ground is not there. Wow. Uh, right on, right on the ground. And uh... Joseph Smith wrote a thank you letter to him. Okay. This is Joseph Smith thanking. Guys, this is Joseph Smith. I put that clip in there because these guys are about to disagree 
or not both. They're disagreeing with what Joseph said. You just heard what they said, and they done the plate, and they showed you the picture. Now they're about to disagree with the uh, founder of the church, the prophet, seer, revelator, Joseph Smith, who they hold. Saying that the book corresponds with and supports the testimony of the Book of Mormon. I have read the volumes with the greatest interest and pleasure, and must say that of all the histories that have been written pertaining to the antiquities of this country, it is the most correct, luminous, and comprehensive. All right. All right, you heard what Joseph Smith said. You heard it, you saw it, you read what his quote is. So why, oh why, are we even discussing this right now? Why did I waste my time and your time? So discussing something we should not have to discuss, but we need to. Joseph Smith said, so that all of I must say or must say this is his uh, saying must say that of all the histories that we have been or that have been written pertaining to the antiquities of the country, it is the most correct, luminous, and comprehensive. The founder of the church, the founder of the Book of Mormon place, if they are real, which I don't believe they are. So the person who translated the so-called said plates, you heard or saw his direct quote. This is the book that the Heartland uh, model uh, proponents claim the historians and scholars hijacked from. This was the book that they said persuaded the new thought and history was changed from there on in. But the leader of their church, their founder, their prophet, their seer, their revelator, says that Mesoamerica is the correct place. And that's why the church doesn't say they don't know where in Mesoamerica, but it's Mesoamerica because Joseph Smith confirmed it. Their prophet, their seer, their revelator. Your prophet, your seer, your revelator. For you who are not members of the church, in the meetings during general conference when they sustain the leaders of their church they sustain it by raising the right hand and sustaining if you do not sustain the leaders they give you an option to raise your hand and not sustain the leaders so true or false is that not what happens in uh, members of the church true or false heartland theory members i'm not wrong that's a true for you heartland uh, model uh, believers true or false do you uh, sustain the current and every prophet of the church from Joseph Smith current? True or false? If true, how do you support the heartland model? Joseph Smith himself says it's wrong. He himself says it's Mesoamerica. So he, he, not historians, not scholars, he. So do you sustain Joseph Smith or not? Because he said so. Do you sustain the prophets of the church from Brigham Young up to the most current? Because they have all said the same thing. All they will say is they do not know where in Mesoamerica. Where? Not that it didn't happen there. They all say that's where it happened. And according to Fair, the paid apologetic branch of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The apologetic branch paid says the church believes it's Mesoamerica. These are the guys who speak on behalf of the prophet, seer, and revelator of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints currently. They say it's Mesoamerica. The stance is it doesn't matter where in Mesoamerica, just the message of it, which I disagree. But the point be it, we shouldn't even continue past here, but we'll finish it off, guys. We'll finish it off. I was relax. very excited because also, the whole place is surrounded with earthworms that match the berms built by the ancient uh, Hopewell well, culture of North America. Okay, I want to stop here. There's something I forgot with my asking if you sustain. Quickly here, if you're this gentleman and you're Rod and those who believe in him, if you sustain the prophet, president, and the leadership of the church, the 12 apostles and his first counselors, and the prophet, so if you sustain them and you you buy into this i don't know how if you don't sustain them you should be excommunicated so you should be excommunicated because this has been always the church's official stance 
So you are saying that the church's leaders are not prophets, seers, or revelators. That's what you are saying. That's a true or false statement. If you say false, you're a liar. Because you are saying that the church historians and scholars hijack this and change the history. The prophets say otherwise. Your prophets say otherwise. I don't believe the prophets. Your prophets say otherwise. Your founding prophet, your founding president says otherwise. So how can you sustain them if you believe this? How? Uh, Archbishop James Usher put the timeline at 2242 BC. He so t about 2242. This is a Christian scholar that's being cited. So most scholars try to say about 2300 is the, the safe spot. Is about 2300. 22, 2300 is the safe spot. So once again, 22 to 2300, these people, supposedly the very first, the Jaredites and Malachites came here. They don't say where they landed. So just that it was in the United States, what's currently the United States. Lehi and his people that came after these people, just less than about 1800 years later, uh, 1800 years later, Lehi comes in 500 uh, BCE and lands somewhere in Florida, according to these guys, Northern Florida, according to these guys. This is what the church has to say. This is what the church's official statement is from the first presidency. There have been a variety of proposals about where the Book of Mormon took place, North America, Central America, South America. What the brethren want us to focus on is the key message of the Book of Mormon, which is Jesus. Yes, they don't want you focusing. They don't want you focusing on the location because even if you don't believe in the Heartland theory, there becomes problems with the Book of Mormon and we'll do that in another video. Jesus Christ. And they state this at the end of the second paragraph of this essay. Although church members continue to discuss such theories today about where the Book of Mormon happened, the church's only position the church's only position is that the events the Book of Mormon describes took place in the ancient Americas. Okay, so this is the first presidency. The prophet, seer, revelator, president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and his first two counselors, first and second counselor. This is their statement. So you guys who are Heartlanders, do you sustain the prophet, seer, and revelator of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Yes or no? If you say yes, then how can you support the Heartland Theory model? How? How can you disagree with Joseph Smith? This is what their comments are based off of. This is why they included it in their fair video when they included the quote from Joseph Smith on Mesoamerica. How? No one in the church should be expected to adopt any theory of Book of Mormon geography as a test of their faith. Yes. So you people who believe in the ifs, I believe, I can't prove, but I believe in the ifs and if I'm right, how can you attack members of the church that you believe are members of the same church you believe in over a Book of Mormon uh, location dispute when all your evidence is belief and ifs? I'm done with you guys. I'm done. Done, done, done. Bruce Lloyd, out the window, heartland hypothesis. Done. There's no actual physical way it's possible. The church itself, its own prophet, seer, and revelator, and president, from Brigham, Joseph Smith, right up to the current, have all said the same thing. Mesoamerica. Your friggin' foundation has gone under the water. I'm sorry for the long video. I'm sorry for people who feel like they might have had their time wasted. But at least you guys know now about the Heartland uh, model and why it is complete crap. Whether you're LDS, you're not LDS, or you're an atheist like me, or a Christian or a Muslim. Now you know why none of us accept it. It is rubbish. Guys, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you learned something. Sorry for wasting your time and my time. That's how I feel. It was a waste of time. I, until then, this is the Theist Apostate. Hope you guys have a great day. The AA saying goodbye.